During the majority of this class, we have worked with procedural programming and planning for procedural programs. But really, if you, aren't, if you don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next, you can't always program a procedure. In many cases, event-driven, object-oriented programming is the solution. And it's very hard to flowchart or plan when you don't know what's going to happen next. I want to discuss what an object is in terms of Alice. Here we have my final project sample and let's say we're going to add a couple of characters here. Maybe I want to add a Dewdrop Willow Wind. Notice it says that Dewdrop Willow Wind is a class. In object-oriented programming a class is a pattern. It's something that you can create more than once one instance of. So if I bring the class to the stage it gets the name of Dewdrop Willow Wind, and it tells you that it is a value type my Dewdrop Willow Wind, which extends Dewdrop Willow Wind. And we're going to go ahead and initialize that to create an instance. So we have an instance of Dewdrop Willow Wind. But since it's from a class, I can create as many as I want. Now each one will get an individual name. This one has the number two at the end of it. And each instance is an object of a class. So class will define something. And if we go and look at the properties here, everything is set. Let's go ahead and go to edit code. And I could select her and look at properties and you can see that we can change her color, her opacity, if she has a vehicle, her width, her height, her depth, and her name. Those are the different properties we can change. And then each object of the same class has exactly the same properties. They also have the same procedures. Each one would have the same procedures. So the class is the pattern. The object is the instance that you can work with. Now in our program that I gave you the example for, we have the Scarecrow who we have added additional properties to. We have Scarecrow Bounce and under my Scarecrow you will also see that If we look in the procedures, we have Scarecrow Bounce and Talk to Me. So I've created two procedures here and I've modified one of the properties when we run the program. I've set it to green. Since flowcharting and pseudocode don't work well when you're pro writing an object-oriented program, there's a different way to plan for object-oriented programs. This is a very, very simplified example of what would be a class diagram. And I've only worked with the things that I have changed. I'm working with the scarecrow. These are the properties that I've changed. I've set the color equal to green. And then I have talk to me and scarecrow bounce. These don't have any parameters passed to them, so they have open parentheses after them. If they were to have a parameter, Let's say we were going to pass it a value that was a string. You would just say string inside of the parentheses. And that would indicate that a parameter of a string type was being passed. When you're creating a class diagram, and I did this in Word, it's very easy to enter in a new table. So you'd um, go to the, and I'm in the Mac version, so you'd go to Tables and you would simply draw a 1 by 3 table and then you can resize it as you wish. When you're creating your class diagrams, you always put, and I'm going to go ahead and center this here, you'd always put the name of the class up at the top, so this would be Name of Class. The second row is always going to be properties. And the final row would have procedures, things that your class can do. And this is how you would describe your program 
and each of the classes. For the final project, you're required to have five characters that are interactive. You may or may not change a property, but you should have two procedures for each character. So instead of doing a flow chart for your final project, I'd like you to do a class diagram and you, it, you may end up leaving the middle line blank, but you should have the name of the class, like I have Scarecrow. If you've changed a property, put it in here, and then I want you to put in the labels for the custom procedure that you have written for your final project. Object-oriented programming usually has procedural programming, which you've been doing so far, nested within it. And you'll see that if we go to Scarecrow Bounce, while we're calling it based on an object, we're using our for loop and we're doing things in order to move them up and down. That's why we always start with procedural programming, because you can't do object-oriented programming without it. But objects are very handy because you can include all sorts of information to describe an object and everything that they can do in the procedures. So this is just a very brief introduction to what a class and an object is and you would get into that more in your next class level.